So now that I got a, a, a tenon that's round, I'm going to go ahead and, and chuck this up. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to true up, true up the inside recess. So I'm going to use a box scraper to go in there and true that up, cutting just on or slightly above center. Line up this edge parallel with the lathe bed. So uh, I'm going to true up. I'm going to go ahead and true up the inside first. Now, to make sure the walls are square, there's two ways. I can either use these inside measures and kind of measure it toward the back, to the back. Another way of doing that, the way I do it with a small box, is I take a small six-inch six ruler, and I just simply lay this down on the inside of my finger against the walls and see does it look square. And I can bring it down just a little bit in the back. I'm not going to get crazy about this because it's going to be a loose-fitting lid anyway. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the front of this. I'm going to use a big box scraper for this, a big, a big flat scraper, let's say. And I'm going to slightly chamfer this. Get a nice shaving so I've got a good burr on here. And then similar to before, I'm going to take a, a six inch ruler and lay it here to see if it comes out a little bit. And it does. I want the outside to touch before the inside when it finally Inside, seated. I think is in pretty good shape. I think I'll probably do the same thing though. I think I'm going to take this large square scraper and just take a couple of, couple of passes in. Let's see if this can give you a little better view. Okay, that's nice and nice and clean. Now, this is my final opportunity to sand this, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get out some sandpaper. I think with that surface, I think I think 220 is probably going to do it. And I'm going to do some do some wet sanding on this. I've made some sanding butter out of uh, beeswax and mineral oil. I have not uh, done a video on that yet, but. Okay, I've got this mounted. I've, I've trued up the face. I've cleaned up the inside. I trued up this recess. I put on a little sanding, sanding butter. Now I'm going to finish sanding, wet sanding. That keeps the, uh, definitely keeps the dust down. And it, it gives you cleaner. It keeps it cooler. I think I'm going to add a little bit of texture in here. Got a very nice, very nice textured pattern there. Okay, I'm going to use my V scraper now to just better define that. Okay, I like that. Just adds a, just a touch. Now I'm going to use a little bit of abrasive paste to kind of, uh, for my final final finishing polish and that gives a very nice soft waxy kind of kind of finish so next I'm going to return the lid or the rather the base I need to true up the base uh, those jaws won't fit so I've got some 35 millimeter spigot jaws I think I can use the outside We'll see if that'll work. Oh yeah, I believe that will. I believe that'll work. All right, now let's see if we can bring up the tail stock to come close to centering it. We know this is the minimum size right here. I've got more room on this one. Okay, no problem. I'm going to go ahead and just use my beading and parting tool to square that thing up.
We're just going to come in here and just... Okay, now we've got to match this. So I'm going to use the... I'm going to use the dividers for that. This is a good, this is a strong chuck hold. I'm not, I don't have to worry about securing this in. So let's just go ahead now and take this tenon down. And just like any box, I'm going to chamfer it forward just a little bit while we test fit it. Now I'm going to take a break and go sharpen this. It's, uh, it needs a little sharpening. Okay, I've got it jam chucked on there. Now I'm going to finish the outside. I'm going to round this over. I'm going to keep this to, to hold the knob, I think. Just clean up the bottom with a half inch spindle gouge. Like so. This is a large spindle, so we're going from large to small. Okay, I've got it pretty well cleaned up. I'm going to leave this little little transition mark here. Okay, we're going to temporarily take this off and work on that knob so I can do a trial fit. And I'm going to leave this on there so maybe I can finish the knob on here if I have to. I'm going to use my 35 millimeter jaws. I've got a scrap of exotic. I don't know what kind. It might be blackwood. It might be coca-bola. It's got a tenon on there that I'm going to use to put a tenon on the other end. All right, we're going to size that down to 7 eighths. Okay, I think we can give that a good trial fit. Make sure this is not too deep. Nope, that'll work. Oh yeah, nice, nice snug fit. Now that I've got this, I've got to figure out how to safely hold this and do this. So all I've done is I'm making a jam chuck. I just took a, a spindle scrap out of my box, drilled a 7 8 inch hole. Uh, we're going to pop that thing in there. We're just going to Turn it on here. I'm not even going to use soft touch. I'm going to use this uh, uh, bolt that's been cleaned off the front. And that will do. That'll do great. We're just going to take light, non aggressive cuts. Okay, I've got it rounded off where it's going to hit the base. And now I think I'm going to uh, just taper it in. I'm going to round this over some kind of fashion. You know, when you want a light cut, to use the smallest tool edge you can find. So that's going to be this uh, quarter inch detail gouge. Come down a little bit. Cut on center. Well, I tell you, I believe this is ebony and it's shining like a new, a new penny. Let's use some of this 220 grit that's got sanding paste on it. You can see the black slurry that's building up. It's filling in, just use, polishing and. And this wet sanding on these exotic woods keeps the heat down as well as it gives the sandpaper a very long life as it builds up a slurry and gets in the pores, preserves the life of the sandpaper, lets it go longer. Now I'm going to use a sanding abrasive, take it up to about a thousand. And that's all on this ebony. This is the only finish it's going to get is this polish. Maybe just a touch of Renaissance wax. 
and I'm liking that a lot. And there we go, very nice uh, polished knob. That gives you a pretty good idea what it what it looks like. I like that knob. Now I need to clean off this surface right here. It's got wax on it. Matter of fact, I think while I'm here, I'm just going to use my skew because it's because I can. It's convenient. Because I just need to get rid of that wax. Bring it up just a hair. Negative rake, scraper mode. I'm not going to use wet abrasive on this because I don't want to get wax anywhere near the glue line. I think I may go back to the skew just to clean up that edge just a little bit. You can see what tiny little shavings I'm getting with that uh, skew as a scraper. All right, this is re ready to be uh, finished sanding, sanded, and uh, the outside sanded and textured. We'll do that off camera. Okay, now that I've got this thing sanded down to uh, 320, I'm going to go ahead and do a little textured band between here and here, maybe a bead on each side. So I'm going to use my texturing tool, cutting right at center, the handle just a bit higher than the the edge of the the wheel so here we go we're going to do this at a speed of about 500 or so we're going to use the uh, pyramid tool point tool and just come in there and define that I'm going to get speed up a little bit close to a thousand now Take, I'm going to take the lid off and clean up the inside a little bit. Okay. Now, I want that lid to come off fairly easily, so I've got to relieve this just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Again, using that beading and parting tool, just taking off just the, the tiniest little bit. Speed upwards of a thousand. I'm getting ready to sand the inside. I'm using a new uh, sanding apparatus that works with Ken's Ultimate Sanding Solution. Where you can just swap off the, uh, uh, the threaded adapter. It, it comes in three different sizes. This is the long one, this is the middle one, and then there's a shorter one. I didn't need the longest one. Uh, so, And I'm also using Ken's new, newest... Uh, angle drill and first time I'm using it the two inch is going to fit easily inside this uh, this vessel so I'll be able to go down the walls a little bit and get get the bottom so we'll see how this goes I've got the speed down to about 300. I'm going to control the speed of this sander. Oh yeah. Yeah, that 80 grit on the inside of this did, did wonders. I think I need to get the air compressor to blow this out. All right, I'm getting ready to glue this knob on. I wiped it off with acetone because sometimes these exotics have oils in them that uh, interfere with the glue. And I'm just going to rub just a little bit of carpenter's glue on here. All right, there's the lid is done. Go set that aside. Okay, I've sanded the inside uh, up to 220. Uh, 
and with the last one being a wet sand with that mineral oil wax to get a really nice finish inside. On the outside here, I think I'm going to finish with with a little walnut oil wax. I'm using some of this Mahoney's walnut finish. Getting it down the texture, I think, is the hardest part. And it's easier to do this on the lathe. Easier to manipulate. Now I get down those grooves. All's left is to reverse chuck this. Um, let's see how we can do that. Okay, now let's just keep keep taking it down. All right, here's our here's our completed box. I'm real a uh, canister, kitchen canister. I'm I'm real pleased with it. If you're not a subscriber and you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't want to miss any future videos. There's also a, a, an end list here, a playlist to a box making uh, playlist. It's got about 20 different videos, and I'm going to add this one to that playlist on box, just on box making. Y'all stay safe and come on back here.